It's an. I, I almost sound like bare naked ladies. It's been another week of wearable today. We're gonna do this and sing away. So anyway, <laughs> today on wearable today, we're gonna talk about wearables that protect you, the defensive wearables, and there's a few of them out there, and we're gonna take a look at them. We're also gonna talk about cats and dogs living together, mass hysteria, fashion companies like Michael Coors, and no, that's not a beer. That's an actual fashion company. Mobile World Congress was this weekend wearables came out and of course the apple watch event next week we're going to talk about it are they going to debut an apple watch probably so let's get it going let's get it started with your episode of wearable today and of course i start by uh with my condolences and of course one of the biggest wearable tech geeks out there uh leonard nimoy passing away last week so live long and prosper um you can find my name is jeffrey powers you can find me over at geekazine think magazine put in a geek and uh, twitter handle geekazine and of course live long and prosper my uh my co-host in the show who just lost his camera feed there it's back again mr luke wallace it's gonna be one of those nights live long and prosper so uh yeah yeah crazy news um yeah, the, the, there's going to be more and more of those. I think uh, you're going to start seeing that because I think uh, you know Star Trek uh, was one of those f- like real first kind of shows that you know geeky shows. I mean, yeah. for its day, you know, especially like there weren't a lot of people like doing shows about advanced computers and stuff. And uh, I think my video just dropped. We'll see yeah, if it comes okay. back. But uh, you know, it, Star Trek, you know, was really for kind of that, you know sci-fi group and you know one of those first shows and so uh you're gonna start seeing that people from that era start to start to have this issue and um you know <laughs> death they're um, gonna they're gonna kinda, drop like spock's what yeah no i don't know spock uh spock came back so we'll have to see how this works but uh, yeah. It was, oh yeah uh, that's right uh there was a joke that uh that said that leonard nimoy stole the space shuttle so he can get to the planet to bring spock back to life mm, yeah but i don't think william shatner could fit in the space shuttle nowadays yeah i i don't know he's 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 doing okay i guess all right well <laughs> went a little bit long on that but you know it, it's important i mean oh, yeah. if it was Luke, if it Luke, wasn't Luke. for if it wasn't for his role you know i think that's one of the things that advanced technology and us geeks was oh, somebody totally. like spock and and uh so we we pay homage we pay tribute to him um, and his career uh, in photos, his career as an actor, it's just, it's amazing. It's, it's something that I wish I would have been able to do. My brother met him in 2007. I wish I would have been able to meet him, but it didn't happen. So yeah. what can you do? Anyway, let's move on. Let's get into, uh, where are we? There we are. Let's get into our segment, Big News, Little Spocks. Oh, long and prosper. <laughs> it's more of a <laughs> Fozzie Bear or something. I don't Fozzie know. Bear. And and um, I'm going to kind of uh, delay for a second because I forgot to get the display going. All so right. why don't you go ahead and talk about the first article as people are going to see big news arms for a second here. <laughs> okay. So dun, dun, dun. Guess who else has wearables besides people? Oh, mm-hmm. that's right. Cats and dogs now even have their own wearable tech. You can get collars that monitor the dog's health and activity with things like voice and whistle. And there's GPS-aware wearables like Tag that help you find your pet. Even wearable harnesses that attach your GoPro to get the pet's point of view are available. There's a whole article on this over at the Santa Cruz Sentinel uh, that uh, we found. And, uh, yeah, you can learn more about it there. All right. <laughs> Next up, fashion company Michael Kors wants you to go higher. Wants to go to higher tech. They announced that they're making plans for wearables and will be announcing things in the next few months. Although we don't have any more information than that, people are speculating purses and things like compacts and lipstick uh, vials and stuff like that are going to be getting the tech upgrade treatment. So if you think about it, if if somebody steals your purse, you could probably just GPS and find it. And, you know, we're not talking like $10 knockoffs. We're talking like 
thousand dollar purses and shoes and and stuff like that so that's that's pretty cool stuff you can read more on it over at bloomberg.com and yeah this won't come as a surprise but uh at mobile world congress there were some wearables and htc announced the grip wearable grip is a wearable fitness tracker with gps and will sync with some armor products and be compatible with Android and iOS both. They're going to be releasing it in the spring, uh, but for now uh, there there's not too many details. One concerning detail I saw was that it says the sport mode is only capable of recording your GPS location for five hours, which yeah. they say is enough for you know a marathon, uh, but not not all day. No. Do you really need it for all day? I don't know. Mm, I, I like not. the fact that it's got the Kung Fu grip. Yeah. It may be just for just for when you're working out, really. To, okay. You know, that's, cool, cool. that's the impression I get. All right. Well, next up, more from Mobile World Congress. H, uh, as, as I haven't flipped this over, have I? Oh, that's why I didn't flip it over. Let's do this. Yeah, I'm so organized. There we go. <laughs> Everybody announced that it, it's called Huawei. Huawei. Say it with me, Luke. Huawei. Yes. Okay. There we go. Now let's get into the article here. Maybe. There we go. Huawei, uh, also from uh, Mobile World Congress, Huawei has joined the wearable market with two new devices. They've kind of been in the wearable market before, but they're, they're going to take a bigger stance in there with their own products. There are two products here. called One's called the Talk Band. That's the one on your left. Uh, that, that's an actual wrist wearable. And then, of course, uh, it's the Talk Band B2. The Talk Band N1 is the one on the right, the, the set of earbuds, which will have 4 gigabytes of storage. Um, and it is a full sports tracker. Um, also not ready for prime time just yet because, of course, it's Mobile World Congress. They're just announcing things. Um, they're expecting that to come uh, in the next couple months. So uh, if you want to read more on that, you can go over to androidcommunity.com. And finally, Apple has been granted a patent for a virtual reality headset. The patent allows the allows the VR to control an iPhone screen. Uh, it's something akin mm -hmm. to the Samsung Gear VR, uh, but the exact differences aren't, uh, aren't, aren't real well known at this point. Uh, the patent was originally filed for back in 2008, and they also have a 3D patent out there, which means Apple has been seriously working on VR for a while now. There's an article over on time.com, and it even links to the original... Uh, the actual patent application uh, on uh, the the U.S. government website, so you can you can read all of the details uh, through that link as well. All right, and that does it for this section. The big news: little arms. <laughs> <laughs> well, there he is. All right. Well, first of all, before we get any further, hey, Luca. I, have you? How was your week so far? Anything? Uh, anything interesting happen? It's been busy. Yeah. It's been one week uh, since our last episode, uh, and uh, it's it's uh, it's been good. Uh, very busy though. I was out at Google uh, at the end of last week, uh, kind of over the weekend for a big GDG summit. Uh, really good to meet up with um, organizers. These are for local. Google developer groups. I guess I'll do a quick shout out. And uh, if you're wondering, hey, I'd like to really, you know, get into some of this Google technology. Uh, um, if you live in any sort of, you know, major city or near a major city, uh, I would suggest you look for a GDG. That's Google Developer Group for that major city. Uh, sometimes there's there's two or three, uh, like in the New York or New Jersey area. There's there's quite a few there. Um, kind of like so the I, Rotary Club or something like that. Uh, I don't really know a whole lot about the Rotary Club, but it, uh, so I'll just say yes, I think. Uh, it's just like it, there are these volunteer organizers all over the country that uh, put together meetups for people who want to learn about different Google technologies. Like a real common one uh, in the Dallas area is Android. So people get together and they, they uh, hear about and talk about Android. And so 
Cool. Um, so I I, uh, I co-organized the GDG Dallas uh, meetups, and so uh, this is kind of a little summit for all the North American organizers to get to get together. Uh, pretty cool. Um, I didn't wear my Google Glass, although a lot of people did. There are a lot of organizers that have it, but I did wear my Moto 360. Okay. And uh, I got a lot of compliments on the orange uh, sleeve, a uh, little case that we uh, yeah, demoed Marcosin, yeah. Uh, yeah, a couple weeks ago. Okay. Very, very cool. A lot of people really liked it. Um, I did point them over to obsessivelygeek.com, so that was fun uh, to, to take a look at it. And I was like, yeah, you can 3D print it and just download it from Thingiverse and make your own. And uh, a lot of people really like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was super handy. You know, you're sitting, listening to someone talk or involved in some sort of activity and, you know, your phone buzzes and then your watch buzzes and you just look down and you're like, oh, yep, got another work email I got while I was, uh, you know, at the conference. So, you know, that is, that is one thing about the wearable tech is, is just the amount of times that it buzzes. You know, if I have my, I, I usually, you know, I'm reviewing one or two phones. So I have like three phones in the house all attached to my account. I have two tablets attached to my account, and then I could have upwards to four different computers turned on at one time. And if I get, <laughs> if I get a Google message, it's like, or, or even a Facebook message, it's, it's like the whole house just goes, <laughs> and it's like, wow. Or, or it'll go, Yeah, there's all, you can tell who gets it first and how it like travels around. It's like the clock's being slightly off in your house. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, just... and, and I'm, I'm the watchmaker, and, and the grandfather clocks just went off. Boom, boom, boom. It's like, so, it's crazy. Tweet and... at Geekazine and, and, <laughs> in the middle of the night and make uh, make Jeff wake up uh, from your Oh, tweet. no. <laughs> you know, that's the beautiful thing about, uh, about uh, uh, the newest Android, a lollipop, is uh, for some reason, I'm, I didn't set any setting, but it kind of knows when it's in sleep mode. Mm -hmm. And it does not it it does not bing, well, and uh, so and if it bings, you know I kind of sleep through that. If it's an important call, I'll actually wake up. Um, but uh, yeah, I won't. Uh, it 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 doesn't it doesn't bother me that much, I guess. So yeah, so that was kind of uh, that's been my week uh, okay. weekend. Um, was fun getting to ride some of the Google buses. Uh, they let us use some of those on Saturday. They've they have some nice stuff. Uh, these are the buses that get uh, protested by the people in San Francisco too. So that's kind of oh, okay. kind of interesting. But we weren't oh, in San Francisco. So. You were in San Jose. I thought. Yes. I, I was thinking. Oh man, I, th I was thinking you were closer to L.A. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. That's, that's actually that's, quite a before before the beginning of the show. I, I thought he was towards L.A. And I said, Oh, you could have went to see Leonard Nimoy, the Leonard Nimoy funeral, because it was a public mm -hmm. funeral, or go to the the man's Chinese theater walk of. Uh, and and uh, drop a card on a star or something like that. But you were in San Francisco, so it really yeah. doesn't matter. So, sorry. Yeah. So, Bertie, yeah. go with you or no? No, no. Bertie stays here. Oh, she um, missed that's me. That's too though. bad. Um, that is too but, bad. So. What well, What about you? Um, How's your week? Well, yeah, are you wondering why I have this on my head? I I am. I thought maybe you're just cold, but mm -hmm. uh, you do have this gray band on your head. Well, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, it's not as cold as it was last week. We are supposed to get four inches of snow tonight. And tomorrow, so I'll be doing some shoveling. But um, when I was out at CES, one of the wearable technologies I did run into were the people at Acoustic Sheep, and they're uh, it, it's called the Sleep Phone Sleep Phones, and they were nice enough. Uh, I'm not this isn't a sponsor or anything like that. This is just a this is the company that I got to talk to at. Uh, uh, talked to at CES, and they sent me a couple pair of uh, sleep phones, which are headphone headbands. And uh, here's their website. Um, it's really cool. They have uh, they have brands for sleeping. They have brands for running. Um, this is the uh, this was the runner band that they sent me. So I got a couple pair of them. Jennifer tried them uh, while she's sleeping, and she she liked them. I really liked them. I mean, I hate you know. I, sometimes I, I I need to put something on because. When it, I, I like silence in the room, but I can't sleep to the TV on because then I got to see what's on TV. Yeah. If I if I listen to music, there's no visual to music, so I, I can kind of sleep to that. So and of course, when I grew up, I, I grew up to, with a radio on in the bedroom. So if if the if the house gets because uh, this is an older house, if it gets ex exceptionally creaky um, and poppy, um, I like to you know put on headphones and just listen to music for 30, 30 minutes. 
But with these, these are awesome because with uh, headphones and with earbuds, I, I sleep on my side, and they all, they're always in the way yeah. when I try to sleep. These, I can lay right on the pillow and, uh, and fall asleep. I can turn, I can flip the cords long enough uh, where I can, I can have the phone by the bed, not on the bed, and I flip back and forth. It's just, it's just amazing. And, of course, I can hear things perfect. Uh, oh, wow. In fact, I was, I was debating whether to wear them today because today, I didn't know if I could hear you, Luke, through these headphones. And this mm-hmm. is the, these are the headphones that I'm hearing uh, the talk back through. So I'm nice. going to take them on the plane uh, to South by Southwest with me. Um, so uh, I'll definitely uh, give them a good uh, testing in the next couple weeks and have some fun from there. Um, nice. Speaking, well, thank you, thank you. Speaking of which, uh, that that does come up to our schedule part. Uh, next week, I am here's my schedule. Next week, actually, I get on a plane. I just got the the plane schedule today. I get on a plane. I go to New York City um, on Tuesday the tenth. I get to uh, go. I think I could talk about this publicly. There's been no embargo information, but uh, there have HP is having a printer thing, and I'm going to learn a little bit more about their printer division. Which uh, I've been to their campus in Boise, Idaho, which is really cool. So I get to see the New York campus, and I'm really excited about that. And then the next day, the 11th, I hop on a plane and I go to Phoenix, Arizona, where I will be driving. I think it's the Ford Festiva. On the 12th, once again, I don't think this is embargo information, so it's not a big deal. Um, and then on the 12th, uh, the afternoon of the 12th, I hop on another plane, and I go to Austin, Texas uh, for South by Southwest. And I'll be at South by Southwest from the 13th through the 18th. So I will be gone from next Monday to the following Tuesday. It's a it's an eight-day period. Um, and, of course, uh, definitely be bouncing around the... the uh, the United States, uh, as as I normally do when I do tra- travel like that. So, because of that, here's the schedule. Next week, probably no show at all. Next week, two weeks from now, we're still negotiating on possibilities because you know there's a lot of wearable stuff at South by Southwest, and there is going. There's a whole track. It's called SX Wear, which we talked about last week. And I'm still talking with them. Hopefully we can find a spot. And if uh, if Luke's available to come down, um, we'll do something. If not, if I find some interview, I might just po- post it up on Wearable Today. Uh, so just watch out for that. Uh, keep track of my Twitter feed, and, and everything should be fine. So three weeks from, uh, from today, we will be back on air uh, with the show. And, and uh, hopefully you'll have some guests or have some great news. If you want to be a guest on the show, let us know, and we'll go from there. So... Uh, I think that's pretty much it, right? Anything else? Sounds good. We okay. do have a we do have a couple of questions uh, in the Q and A. So yes, I did. Uh, uh, Eric Eric Forty, uh, who's back. Yeah, thank you very much for coming back, Eric. Um, I guess it was on the dog question. I, I assume that's what this. Uh, do they this one's referring. fit extra small ex small dogs? Extra small dogs. I guess that's what that's that is. We don't know. Um, I'm guessing that they're going to have collars for smaller dogs and bigger dogs alike. Um, so uh, just uh, just check with uh, with the companies and 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 so I think the uh, GPS collar, you you supply the collar. They just supply the key fob or yeah. whatever that is uh, that uh, that attaches to the pet's neck. So yeah, I and think they're if- mostly collar. Like they just dangle, so what it, they would fit on any dog that can wear a collar. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the other question—I don't think that was a question. And just back to the future clocks. So we'll just uh, we'll just nix that and go from there. But uh, I'm not—I'm not sure we meant by back to the future clocks. But well, we know. were talking about having all the clocks in the house. You said. Uh, oh the yeah. The, okay. Stuff. Okay. So well, back, oh, like back to the feud, like in uh, okay, Doc Brown's uh, yeah uh, place. Got it. Yeah. There you go. Exactly. Now, now, now we're up to speed. So, I think it's time that we move on and uh, we go into our next segment, and that's called the Apple Watch Watch. And you know what's really sad about this? Next week, after next week, there. This is the last Apple Watch Watch segment. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Well. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty much. Well, we'll see what happens, but Is but it? let's let's uh, let's move on to there the uh, Apple Watch demo event, or the Apple Watch event, or there's an event on March 9th. 
Yes. And everybody's saying it's the Apple Watch event. So, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the Apple Watch event because, you know, they said it's going to be in the springtime, and they're not going to cut. Tim Cook's not going to come out and go, "Hey, we got a new Apple TV," and uh, you know, we're getting ready for our Apple, <laughs> our Apple yeah. Well, I/O. Yeah, it, you know. it'll be about the Apple Watch, but will it be like? A, Will they release it that day, or will they say, okay, here is the release date, and here's the pricing, here's how you can pre-order? You know, I think like that's maybe it, yeah. but maybe I'm jumping ahead too much. Let's... If, if I had to guess, it's going to go on sale on fr- the following uh, Friday, what would that be, the, the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th? 13th. 13th, that's right. Friday. Friday the 13th, which makes sense. Yeah, Apple Watch on Friday the 13th. And then you'll be able to pre-order that on the 13th. And then the following week, they'll have the Apple Watch. I don't think that they want to do what they did two years ago or with the iPad 2. With the iPad 2, they put the release date on a date that everybody was at South by Southwest Interactive. And so Mm -hmm. what they had to do is they had to build a special Apple store in downtown Austin so people could buy the iPad 2. So I'm guessing that they wanted to avoid interactive week of South by Southwest. So therefore, the following week, I'm guessing, pre-orders on the 13th, and then, of course, uh, the purchase on the 20th. I could be completely wrong. They might not even be looking at that anymore and decide that. But yes, the Apple Watch is expected. I am, I am kind of expecting an update to Apple TV. You know, they've, they've been getting their bruises in in the -the over-the-top television market lately Um, and I think that it's time to do something with Apple TV maybe even rework the interface a little bit and I'm hoping that they're going to talk about that Um, other than that I don't think there's not going to be any OS updates or or anything like that they're going to save that for their their uh, WWDC um, when of course they get ready for the next iPad they also talked about the 12 inch iPad possibly um but we'll see what happens there. Do you think do you think that they'll come out with a 12 inch iPad? Uh I don't think so. I think this is just going to be an Apple Watch event. I think they're going to show off a bunch of software that's been made for the Apple Watch uh and really get the hype going uh really good try to show a bunch of amazing things that it can do, mm-hmm. which I'm sure it can. Um, and I think then they'll announce a pre-order date and a um, and a an in-store release date and the pricing for it. Uh, yeah, I might I might guess that the pre-order date. I think you know the Friday the same week that would fall during South by Southwest. I could see them wanting to do that because then that way everybody at South by Southwest is talking about. Did you pre-order your Apple Watch? Oh man, I pre-ordered mine. Oh, it's gonna be awesome and. Yeah. Um, or, you know, whatever. Um, I do think that, you know, you're probably right there on uh, they won't want to um, actually release it during South by Southwest. Um, I think it'd be too big of a product. So I think they might even wait another week or two. Uh, they might they might wait um, till early April or very, very late March even uh, to kind of um, find some find some empty time on the calendar to really try to hype it up. I mean, it seems a little long, but. You know, uh, yeah. if they if they spread out the pre-order, they may even put the pre-order out like, oh, you know, two weeks and try to build as much hype over those two weeks of getting people like, look, you got a pre-order, you got a pre-order, look, we got to, yeah, two weeks, they're yeah. going to open it up and stuff, you know, like, and, and do that. But, they, you know, if you think about it, a guerrilla marketing stance would be, let's build a store at South by Southwest and uh, and let's let's sell the Apple Watch and maybe even give it a discount for some some of the people that are there. Uh, I, I could see that happening. Um, I, I don't think Apple would ever give a discount. Well, know. okay, but, maybe not the discount, <laughs> maybe not. But putting the star together and, and doing that, if they have if they have the uh, the storefront to do it, and I know that South by Southwest is going to be a little bit different this year because Fifth Street is still torn up. They were planning to have it done before the event happened, but they didn't get mm-hmm. to it. And I guess uh, Fifth Street's still, still going to be torn up, so it's going to be a little bit different, uh, some mm. of the storefronts for, uh, for South by But it, it's interesting because you'll have an empty building one day, and then the next day it'll, it'll be something big. And then a week later, it's all gone. They tear, they yeah. tear it down, and then the next day a new, uh, something new comes in there. And then they tear it down, and then the original store that it was, 
goes back in. Yeah. yeah. So it's just it's interesting. So, but anyway, any other thoughts on the Apple Watch? Uh, nothing that I should probably talk about. <laughs> okay. If anybody wants to send us an Apple Watch, you know, just let us know. Geekazine is my Twitter handle. Luke Luca is mm-hmm. Luke's Twitter handle. And we'll be glad to, uh, to, to you know, it doesn't have to be the gold one. But, you know, if you want to send the gold one, <laughs> it doesn't it's fine, have too. to be. It doesn't I mean, have that's to obviously, be. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So, um, but, uh, yeah, if you want to send it, that's fine. And we'll definitely uh, tear it apart, review it, and all that other good stuff. You can go from there. So, all right, let's move on to our next segment. Our next segment is called Fund Me. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is what I'm calling a great concept, but poor execution. Now, most companies have been working on a companion wearable for your smartphone, but what if your smartphone was the wearable? Blue is working on a wearable phone that is completely flexible, which is can be done. I've seen flexible screens at CES and all that other good stuff, but uh, not sure how it works, but the whole phone would actually wrap around. I, I'm guessing it's like one of those slap bands that we used to have like 10 years ago. You probably go to the party store, you can find a whole bunch of them for a quarter each or something like that. Um, but the Android device would be on a full, it'd be a uh, bendable item uh, to, uh, to a circle. It probably can't fold it in half or anything like that, but uh, you could probably bend it to fit around a wrist. Not sure about the Kickstarter though. Because of the backing levels, this is this is this is the type of Kickstarter that I'll tell people be very weary on, and I think a lot of people have been because if you can if you see this, it says there's 22 days to go. You're looking for six hundred thousand um, dollars, and that's AUD. Is that Australian dollars? I, I think. believe so. Yeah, um, they only got thirty-two thousand of the six hundred thousand dollars to go. They've got hundred thirty backers. Um, but let's 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 scroll down this a little bit because this is this is the thing that we were talking about. Let's get to the uh, they got a graphic on the uh, on their backer levels. <clears throat> Excuse me. So and they're talking blah blah blah. You know, Ben's and, and it, they don't have an actual prototype. They just have uh, graphic models and stuff like that. And like I said, it can be done. We have the technology to be able to to do a bendable phone. It's it's not impossible but there's no reality to here and they got the development timeline here um but i guess this was going to be farther down <laughs> so here's some more concepts of it oh here we are so for seven dollars uh five dollars usd you can get support and that's great uh for thirty dollars you get a t-shirt and a hat now here's here's the here's the next backing uh level which really i i don't get this for 193 dollars 150 dollars us you can reserve one wearable smartphone to purchase for 520 dollars usd uh for pre-order in december so if you become a backer of blue you have to pay $193 so you can become get on the wait list f- uh, to order this so you can pay another $530. So now we're, uh, we're at uh, $680. Um, and then it's, it, you're just on the wait list. You're, not, you're, you're probably first on the wait list, but the product still hasn't come out yet. So in all reality... This device will not be out until 2017. They don't have a working prototype that I've seen. And you pay almost 200 well, you pay $150 to then pay another $530. That, my friends, is what I call skeezy. Skeezy. Kickstarter. Crowdfund. Uh, the, I would... Uh, I'm... I'm intrigued on the fact that, that they want to do this. And if they do this and then they become successful, more power to them. But this is skeezy. It's simple as that. Now, their next, uh, they have their next uh, backer level, uh, $257, which is $200. US dollars. And with that, you, can, you reserve one wearable smartphone to purchase for $400 uh, for pre-order in December. Now we we move we move on to the the third level, which is uh, four hundred dollars, and you can get I think it's uh, two smartphones, his and hers smartphone. You you also get the T-shirt and the hat, so you're you're good on that. But 
it's yeah. so it's skeezy. It's as simple as that. I mean, you're paying one hundred fifty dollars. And in December, you could be paying five hundred thirty dollars, but they might have found, oh, well, after all, it's R and D. That you know, it's going to be more than that. You'll have to pay six hundred or seven hundred dollars instead of five hundred thirty dollars. It's not a guarantee. It's 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 uh, it's something I don't really uh, approve of. No, you're asking, well, why am I, why are we talking about this? If if this is something that's just setting off all alarms. This is the type of crowdfunding you got to watch out for on crowdfundings. And like I said, they could be on the up and up and up, and they could come out with a product that blows away 2017, blows away 2018, becomes the number one product. We, we're buying this over the iPhone and all that, or maybe I, Apple buys the patent. Now, here's the other thing, and this is the, this is the, this is the catch here. Let's say something happens, and this product does not come out to market. Do they then give you the $150 back? Because you're not paying for the watch with $150. You're paying for a place marker. And that place marker is still good. But in December, if they, come, if they don't have a watch, or if they come into a legal problem or something like that, do you get your $150 back? That's where it gets really sketchy. And I, that's, that's why I really don't like how this Kickstarter is set up. So um, I know you, you've read through it. Um, on here, do you, uh, what what do you, what are your thoughts? Am I totally off base on this? Thing? <laughs> no, no. Uh, I don't know if you've still got that page up. If you could scroll oh, yeah. down a little bit, like they show some math, I guess that's what you call it. In that example, they show a pricing example. Oh so yeah, the like, little blue box. Yeah. yeah, blue backer one. So I guess RRP is real retail price. Let's so see they're if I saying can zoom this in. It's going to be eight hundred dollars. They say. Then they say seven ninety nine minus your pledge amount if you're blue backer one, which is one hundred and fifty, so that brings it down to six fifty, really six forty nine. So math error number one, um, and then it says down payment equals pledge amount one fifty. So I'm trying I, to find it here. Sorry, <laughs> when I yeah, when I zoomed it's, in, it's it a ways kinda, down. Yeah, um, and they show. Then they say that you get 20% off $650, which is $130. There it is. So then they're only asking you to pay $520. So they're saying you basically by pre-ordering, you get a 20% discount, but they're not just you're not just pre-ordering the thing. So it's like I think that math is very um, confusing. Sketchy. Yeah, and I'm not really sure. It's like, well, the down payment is the pledge amount. It's like, well, no, the down payment, but the, you said the pre-order price was 650 so shouldn't it be 150 off of that? Because it's not really a pre-order price if you're, if I'm just paying the 799 in the end. I don't know. I'm very, I'm very confused. This to me just feels like they're doing it completely wrong. And there's a lot of problems with that because they're trying to raise $600,000 and they're basically saying the most money that we are going to take is 510 or more. I mean, you can always pledge more out of the goodness of your heart, but um, you can pledge 510 and then you can purchase two more for 800. So I think what they should do is just say it's going to be $800 mm -hmm. and the pre order price is 700. Yeah, $700 or 650 or whatever it is. Yeah. And then just say pledge, you know, 650. And then we will, you know, get it. They would hit their six hundred thousand a lot quicker. Yeah. Uh, if they took more money from people, and it wouldn't have this really sketchy feel of, well, you paid one fifty to be able to reserve to purchase it for five twenty in December. And it's like that. Why not just let the people pay six fifty now or eight hundred now or whatever money it is because they've gotten. Three people to back it at the 193 level, but then you're going to say, okay, now you've you've gotten people to give up $200 basically. You're going to go back and ask them for 500 more later. What if in December they're like, uh, no, I don't want that thing because all of this other stuff has come out in the meantime, and yeah. so why would I spend another 500 bucks? And then they're like, and now I, but I have to put 200 towards it right now, even though I won't be able to see it. So, um, like. Things with this long of a timeline on Kickstarter or it can always be kind of sketchy, sketchy you know, because, yeah, it's like uh, you want me to wait nine months to pre-order it, which means it won't be ready in nine months. You just want me to 
pre-order it in nine months. It's like, mm -hmm. if Apple did that, I mean, even Apple couldn't pull that one off of like, hey guys, Apple Watch. Um, yeah, we're having an announcement. It's going to be awesome. Uh, pre-order in nine months. Uh, and <laughs> it'd be like, uh, you can't, well, you can't they, wait that long. They just, they just did. But it's more of, hey, pre-order in nine months, but if you give us $100 now, you'll get on the wait list for that. But yeah, they, they, with yeah. watch, that's what they did. Was they said they said last year at uh, WWDC, we're going to come out with a watch. I think that's uh, either WWDC or the following event. It wasn't um, WWDC. It was the later. Okay, event. it was it the was later a, event. And that was, was October. Event. So October, yeah. November, December, January, February, March. So that was five months. Okay, five months. Um, yeah. for but they said that it was event. coming next year, and but then they didn't say pre-order it. They didn't open yeah. up the pre-orders and say, okay, buy a spot now to pre-order in nine months or five months or whatever so it's you know even even apple's not that bold to try to yeah. get people to commit to something that well, far in it, advance it really tells me that they don't have the money for it um because they're they're looking for uh we've got the concept we're running we're running out of money because we got the concept here yeah. and we've got no working prototype um so your two hundred dollars to pre-order it is going to give us the money so we can continue on so we can make the prototype um so this is the other and i i i have a feeling that if they go further they don't get their six hundred thousand dollars i don't know what and, and i think kickstarter has been doing this i know with the indiegogo you can have what's called a flex uh a flex crowdfund flex so, so if you don't if you don't hit the goal you get whatever money you receive. I don't know if Kickstarter started doing that. I know for a while they were like, uh, uh, if you don't hit the goal, it doesn't get funded. Everybody gets their money back. So um, right now it's like 22 days to go, and it's not even hit $100,000. So I'm guessing that it is definitely not going to do it. It's not, it's not like what the Pebble's been doing <laughs> on oh, yeah. uh, Indiegogo. Yeah, now that shows you the, the difference there between um, you know, having a product and you know, on the Pebble, you can actually pre-order the thing. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, Pebble's goal was five hundred thousand, and they're up to uh, eleven point nine million. So uh, they'll probably hit twelve million, maybe by the end of this podcast. But uh, <laughs> like, should we do a, should we do a watch or something like that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, Pebble they may, watch they watch may... or something like that. <laughs> It's coming. Like they got twelve million dollars uh, already. You know they've already sold twelve million dollars worth of them. So let's see if I, I can find be... it. But really yeah, quick. it's like and here it's the choice of a Pebble Time watch in any of the three colors, and it's two hundred dollars uh, normally. And they're letting people buy it for one seventy nine. Um, they sold the first ten thousand at one fifty or one forty nine, one fifty nine. Sorry, um, without any sort of issue. And then now the uh, they only have one left at the 179 level. Is this um, on Indiegogo or Kickstarter? Kickstarter. Well, I thought it was on Indiegogo. Mm -mm. Oh, my bad. So, yeah, so it's like, there you go. They're, like, they're only, like, and that's the thing. You know they've done it before, and so it's like, if you're looking to spend 150 bucks, like, why not actually get a watch out of it as opposed yeah. to, you know, yeah, it's not, it's not the curved screen, but you may actually get this thing, and you could probably sell your Pebble in the future if there ever was a curved screen one or something, you know, like, yeah, don't, I would say just, yeah, don't spend your money on this, on this other yeah. thing. So. All right, well, let's take a look at this thing. I think I got to zoom it back down here. But anyway, uh, as you can see, 54,318 backers, um, $11 million, 24 days, 24 days to go. And they're, they've they've exceeded their five hundred thousand dollar goal, <laughs> and a little, uh, bit. a little bit, a little bit, yeah. So uh, this is how you do it, and uh, and to give it credit, you know, there were already Pebble fans, but you know, that's the first thing that you learn in doing crowdfunding is you do, you just don't put up a page and expect everybody to come flock to it. It's it's like anything else. You've got to promote it. You got to pre-promote it. You got to put together email lists. You got to you got to send out PR stuff and and emails and say, hey, we're going to be coming out with this crowdfund. We need your money. We need you to help back it. 
come to take a look at it. You 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 put together a campaign, then you you uh, launch your crowd your uh, crowd fund, and the first week you get your your big thing. As you can see with uh, with uh, with the blue, they they're not even at a hundred thousand dollars. That's where they needed to be. Uh, for that first week, and then the last week, that's where you get the the extra push. But they're not even there, and then that's that's the sad thing. It looks like a great product, but there's too many details that really say, "Hey, this is the sketchiest thing on earth." And uh, I I really hope that they actually come out with something good, but they'll have to they'll probably have to do a different uh, Kickstarter. Uh, just kind of nix this one all together, start it over. Do it the right way, and and don't do these backer levels where you buy a ticket to get a pre-order. That doesn't make any sense to me. So, anyway, so what are your thoughts on? Do we have anything in the Q and A on that? No. Nope. Okay. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions on that, just let us know. Uh, uh, my Twitter handle, of course, Geekazine. Uh, Luke's handle is uh, Luke Luca. He lives on the second floor. And uh, you can go from there. Check that all out. Let's move on from there. Let's get into the uh, into this topic at hand: wearable defense. Um, now, uh, I, I was reading an article on Pittsburgh.cbslocal.com about some defensive wearables, wearables that look like you know rings and bracelets and stuff like that, but they do a little bit more um, if you were ever attacked or anything like that. Um, these, uh, these will help you get out of instances, um, where, you know, you can defend yourself. And the, and the first one we're, I'm going to show you is this one right here. It's a company called Siren Ring. And it, as you can see, it's a nice little ring. They got it next to a, a jar and there's a, uh, there's the ring on the wood. Kind of looks like a, I don't know, a medieval looking ring. You probably get your, your birthstone in there or something like that. But the one thing that this has is a 110 decibel alarm. So I guess you twist it or something like that. And then when it happens, if you're, if you're in a bad situation, you need help, you twist it, and 110 decibels screeching alarm will happen, just like with the purse ones. And you've probably heard those go off. This will probably be just as bad. Um, probably USB chargeable um, and, uh, and stuff like that. So interesting ring i don't know if it's it's if it's very a fashionable ring I, I would would uh your wife uh, want to wear something like that or does that look too rudimentary uh i don't know if the fashion uh aspect of it is something that she'd be real interested in because it's kind of large which is understandable i mean it's got to have all this uh hardware in it mm -hmm. um but uh yeah it's uh, you know, it's it's definitely interesting. I can definitely understand, um, you know, the the reason that people might want it because you know it's a it's an issue and it's a great way because you're like, ooh, what if something happens and you know I need to call for help? Will people, you know, be able to hear me? Will it? You yeah. Know, will will they they hear somebody yelling? Will they think it's just like somebody you know just playing around? Uh, you know, just you know, ah, you know, like, well, are they, you know, are they really in danger or are they screaming? Sometimes you hear those things and you like, you hear some little kid scream and then it just turns out they're really excited and they're just like, ah, ah, so fun. And they're like, oh, you know, like you're scaring me, kid. I thought you were, <laughs> I thought somebody was, you know, I thought somebody was hurting you, but they're like, no, they're just playing on the slide. It's just super fun. And, you know, I, that happens less likely with oh, yeah. adults, but you yeah, know, you don't, you like, don't give that to the 12 year old kid. That's for sure. Yeah, no, 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 no. This is definitely, you know, for adults, but like when you hear like a siren going off, there's no doubt that like, uh, that's not like no one ever sets off a siren for fun, you know? So it's like, this is a definitely a, do you know um, how many, how many car alarms go off in my neighborhood? Uh, I, I, I I swear it's, it happens at least once or twice in a week. Mm -hmm. And you're just sitting there on the couch or something like that. All of a sudden you're beep, 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 beep. And you're like, uh, okay, somebody's car alarm. It's not like rush to the window and see whose car alarm is, is going off. It's more like, oh, yeah, car alarm's going off. So I don't know. if <sighs> I, I understand the whole process, but is it is it something that people would respond to or just go, oh, yeah, another alarm's going off. This is ridiculous. So... 
Um, we do have, uh, I'm going to show you the watch, the, uh, yeah, the watches, the rings really quick. Uh, you can get them in gold or silver. And, and it just, it looks like they, it's just a pa bad paint job on top of a ring. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and then of course you can get black onyx. Uh, you can get it in the, uh, I guess that's some sort of topaz and I don't even, I don't know the colors. Yeah. So, but, uh, Lab know, it's not Labradoodle a... is over here. Lab, Labradoit. Doidle, what is that? Gold plus Labradorite. Labradorite. Hmm. So you can, or Carnelian or Avertur. What? Who Who comes up with these? What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. But, so. I mean, I think the I think the concept is good. You know, it's a, it's a oh, yeah. more stealthy, um, you know, quickly accessible, wearable. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's not something that you have to dig through your purse or... Uh, you know, uh, walk around within your hand and, yeah. you know, maybe, yeah. um, you know, maybe like you can't carry things or, you know, you're carrying a bag or mm -hmm. whatever. And you're like, Oh, well I wouldn't be able to grab stuff. And, you know, am I more of a target because of that? Uh, maybe, you know, this gives you, you know, some, some feeling of confidence. So mm -hmm. um, I'd, I'd want it to be green lantern. I'd wear the green lantern ring. You know, that's probably not a bad idea for, yeah. for guys and be like, Hey, you know, guys get beat up too. And, um, you know, it wouldn't be bad to have a way to, you know. Does it look like I get beat up? I should see the other guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to. Da -da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> you I can run pretty fast. I can hear you with these things on. Your age, whatever. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> let's move on from there. Uh, next up is a little thing called the little viper. And uh, oh, this was viper. It's a little viper, yeah. Like <laughs> cute, cute little viper. Uh, basically, what this is is a bracelet, um, and it looks like it's got a uh, you know a, a spray, a pepper spray inside the bracelet. So um, you, as you can see in that, well, you can't see it in the bottom corner. I can see it. Um, the one woman in the red dress is is demonstrating how you push down on it, and of course they've got you know you, Steve Harvey and the View. who was on Fox and. NBC and <laughs> did CBS they New York. Spray Steve Harvey. That'd yeah. be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Try it out. Oh yeah. my eyes! My eyes! Oh my, my! I can't do Family Feud now. <laughs> top ten people. Top ten uh, answers on the board. Name somebody you would like to pepper spray. <clears throat> Steve Harvey. No, that's not correct. Let's so go to the board. I, let's go to the board. Ding, yeah. ding, number one. <laughs> Birdie, Birdie, oh, no. Birdie's, Birdie's all for that. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Birdie's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, no, it's, it's actually pretty cool. I, we're, we're joking on that, of course. But, you yeah. know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice uh, it's a, it's a bracelet that doubles as pepper spray. Um, I, I would wonder if it would start to leak or possibly get accidentally pushed. The next thing you know, a little bit of pepper spray is going off here and there and everywhere. And, the, or, or, and then you just run out of bottle. Um, but you know, have it easy, uh, at, at your fingertips. I think you'd also need it to, to be able to activate it using only one hand as opposed to two, because what she's doing is she's doing it like this. And if somebody grabs you, they've, you usually have got that hand, that arm that you can't get to the other arm to do the pepper spray. So, and it's, it's a great idea. I'm wondering how hmm. it will actually function in, uh, in, in the real world out there. Yeah, I, I, they say it's the first and only fashion pepper spray self-defense bracelet. I don't know if I, it doesn't look real fashionable to me. I mean, I'm not exactly an expert on fashion, so, you know, may, maybe maybe I'm just way off. But I'm like, eh, I, it definitely looks like it's useful. And, uh, yeah, I, I definitely understand their point of, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it is more convenient to have it out. But I do agree, you kind of have to be able to get your hands together um, which, you know, maybe the, I, I don't know exactly what the, uh, the, the pepper spray statistics are like, do, do people use it? Like as soon as someone starts coming at them, like, you know, I mean, is that, is that how it's typically used? I would think that, um, it's something you have to kind of, you have to have a little bit of distance for it to be effective so that you can actually do the spraying. But, yeah. um, yeah, so not yeah. not a horrible thing um i don't yeah I, I don't know if i'd say it's real stealthy uh maybe you know maybe it is with the right with the right kind of stuff but yeah not a not a bad way to go if you want to oh, yeah. make sure you always have it handy or you're going to a 
you know, kind of dangerous area and you're like, mm-hmm. uh, I want to be able to, like, I just want to feel like, again, that, yeah. that little bit of confidence of, you know, I, I have something, I am, you know, ready to go if, if, uh, if I feel yeah. in danger. So it's definitely not a bad first start. And, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. you know, the, I think these, these products, if, if it saves one person from getting mugged or attacked, oh, yeah. I, I'm all for it. So, yeah. um, I do like and, your and, idea of the, what? uh, like kind of, a maybe a Spider-Man type thing where like you can just kind of point your hand and, you know, squeeze and then it just shoots the pepper spray at them. Like that'd yeah. be pretty awesome. Or maybe a, maybe a word or something like that. Or uh, uh, if, if, if the ring or the bracelet was to sense that you're in danger because you're elevated heart rate, uh, sweating, you know, just telltale signs that, that, uh, that a wearable could tell that you are in distress and it could put out a signal um, and and might uh, might be better than than having the pepper spray and go from there. So, uh, but you know that's that's down the road. These are these are very rudimentary type objects and no different than like like the alarm system. Like I said, they used to have it in a purse with a little trip wire, like a grenade pin. You pull the mm-hmm. grenade pin and it would it would make that noise. I remember that back in the eighties they had that. So. Uh, uh, lots of cool stuff, stuff here, but let's let's move on because we're, we're running out of time here. The next one yeah. we have is uh, this woman is actually she. I don't think she's got any type of website, so I found this a news article about her. Um, she's creating light up dresses, and they're great for when you go to the ball, when you go to the prom, and stuff like that. However, they're also great when you're trying to walk down the street. And maybe the maybe the light is out in the street, um, so you can be seen. So if there is a mugger that comes nearby or something like that, you'll be able to. Uh, people will be able to find you, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to uh, um, not find you if uh, if you're lying in a bush or something like that um, after being attacked. So I, I like that one. Really, really quick uh, thoughts on that. Yeah, I definitely understand. Definitely being more visible at night, especially if you're, you know, near the, whatever you call it, uh, you know, near the theater or the the opera or something, and you're you're like, ah, eh, now we have to kind of walk down this dark alley, or you know, there's yeah, the street light is out for this block. Um, I'm gonna turn these lights on, so if if you know anything happens, uh, they would you know somebody would see, and so they would say, hmm. That lady just got, you know, grabbed or something, and they, you know, either they wouldn't grab you because they're like, uh, someone's going to see that uh, mm-hmm. for sure, uh, or, um, you know, yeah, you, it, yeah, I like the how it's kind of got a self-defense aspect to it as well. Pretty, exactly. Pretty interesting. And 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 the best part is, it'll be one of the most talked about gowns, unless everybody starts wearing light up dresses, then then it's all over. So. Yeah, yeah. You can, and as long finally, as you can change the color. Exactly. Exactly. The color. Oh, we didn't wear the same dress. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. I I see where you're going with that. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Um, last up, we actually talked about this a couple weeks ago, and uh, it's it's a cool defensive mechanism as well as uh, the type of tool that'll get you out of anything. It's it's a Leatherman tread, and this is a, it can be a bracelet or you can actually attach a watch to it or another device, a wearable device uh, if you want to, and it can act as the watch band. Each cog in this uh, Leatherman does a different function like a screwdriver or they've got Allen wrenches. I don't think they have a knife knife in there but I wouldn't be surprised if they come up with some way to do that so it doesn't cut into you while you wear it. But you know if it does have, one of the tools it does have is a window punch. So if you Mm. get thrown into a car you can pull this off and then punch out the window bust out the window um so people you know if, if, if you're driving down the street and you see somebody bust out a window it's like hey there's something all wrong over there i better call the cops yeah. um and so lots of cool stuff there that that's not really uh that's more of a uh you know the, the rugged outdoorsman type uh thing but you know i've seen many that it, it could be very fashionable to to be wearing with uh with a nice evening gown or something like that so there's definitely uh, a lot of things you could do with it. They do show it opening a box, um, but I'm guessing that they're just using one of the uh, flathead screwdrivers yeah. that's pretty small to just kind of cut through the tape. But, yeah, it's uh, 
it's pretty neat and yeah probably in a pinch you could it could definitely hurt somebody with it i think you know and definitely make them think twice so you can open up uh cans and bottles and stuff like that just in case you know if the if they throw you in the basement with a whole bunch of beer at least you're gonna drink the beer I don't know. but yeah. anyway yeah. uh but no it, it's actually it's actually a pretty cool tool because if you are in a trunk you know it, all you have to do is turn on a light and and in a lot of cars you just have to take out a couple screws and you could take out the whole trunk if you wanted to um if you you, you just have to know where the screws are and it's it, yeah. it's not like they've got any type of um, any type of uh, uh, padding or anything like that on the top of the trunk. That's all. That's all steel screws and stuff like that. And you just know how to take it off. Next thing you know, the trunk goes flying off at the car. And then I'm driving along. It's like, hey, a trunk just flew off. I better call the cops and find out what's going on. So yeah. and go from there. Uh, and Eric asks, will it make it through TSA? And the answer, I do. We do know this because we talked about it two weeks ago. The answer for the Leatherman. Is I believe yes, it was uh, it was a TSA approved item. Do you remember? I'm pretty sure it was. I'm like 99.99 percent sure it was. Yeah, according to some of the comments, it says that it's uh, airport safe, and I believe now you can take um, pocket knives with you know short blades on them uh, through there, and so this wouldn't have anything long enough to be considered a a you know real weapon. Yeah, um, like or at least for purposes of, of that. If any, if anything, you take your smartwatch off the band. You take the band, you throw it in your roller case, which goes checked luggage. If you do that, I, that's what I normally do is I check my luggage. And I don't have to worry about the luggage getting on a plane, especially when you have to do a, a, a transfer leg like I do. And it's very rare that they lose your luggage in that process. And I, I fly Delta, and Delta's got this new thing that. If my luggage isn't there when I arrive, then I get more miles, and I'm kind of happy with that. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. But, yeah, if anything, I, I, I sometimes I do, like when I go to CES, I always take my Leatherman with me, and I throw that Leatherman in my suitcase. Um, and, well, actually, it's a Pelican case in that case because I got all my recording equipment. And so, yeah, I, I, I want to make sure that I have a device with me. So if, if whenever you're in doubt, put it and check it. And yeah. go from there. Yeah. So, but I think it. Yeah, I think it's probably safe. So. Yeah, definitely. So, and uh, but, but basically, those are the ones that I found. I know there's probably some other ones uh, coming out in the future. Um, I, I I queried a whole bunch of different people. Nobody said any other type of defensive uh, wearables, but this is definitely a growing. We'll probably have another time when we'll talk this segment once again. Um, but uh, if you've got a wearable device that. Uh, that is in defense, uh, defending, uh, you know, being able to uh, protect yourself, let us know. You can Twitter me over at Geekazine, or you can email me, Jeff, at wearabletoday.com. And, of course, Luke will, will give him the credentials in a second here. But this does bring us to the end of this episode of Wearable Today. I'd like to thank you very much for coming. I'd like to thank Eric for coming back, Eric Forty, coming back and, uh, and asking some questions. Really do appreciate it. It helps the show a lot there. But you can find me over at geekazine.com, um, Twitter handle geekazine, just think magazine, put in a geek. And Luke? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Luke Luca. It's L-U-K-E-L-U-C-A. Or email me at luke at wearabletoday.com or email Birdie, B I R D I E, at wearabletoday.com. Uh, send her some fan mail. I noticed you didn't talk about your Google Plus page since Google made the new announcement. Everybody's freaking out because of the streams versus photos. Yeah, I, I haven't read up on all of those details yet, so I'm not sure exactly how to be freaked out. But, uh, yeah. you know, I'm, I will freak out a, accordingly. Uh, yeah, when the time I, s I still think it'll be plus.google.com forward slash plus Jeffrey Powers. Uh, you know, yeah. years from now, it's not like they're going to, I don't think they're going to. I don't think they're getting rid of Google it. Plus. Uh, they've got a lot of traction there. Um, yeah. But yeah, I do think that they might say, or if you just want to follow the photos of someone, you can basically search for either that tag or their name and you yeah. can look at just the photos they post um, yeah. because that's kind of what, you know, Basically, that's Instagram, uh, you know, so they're, they would compete more directly with that if you could just see the, the photo content instead of the, 
the text exactly. content and the link content and all that stuff. Well, the other thing is the communities, and I have a very large community. Uh, I, I, being a podcaster, I talk with podcasters. I'm a podcast coach. So I have the podcasters community, which is, as far as I've seen, the largest podcaster community on the Internet. Um, that goes that crosses all the social networks. I haven't found one bigger than than mine. I I, mean, I might just be, be naive to that, but I you know I spend a lot of time and effort putting into that community to grow it that big. I don't want to see it disappear. I don't think it's going to disappear, and I think Google Plus will just become Google Streams or maybe Google Plus. You'll call it Google Plus. You'll call it Google Streams. It is what it is. FeedBurner still exists, and that thing has been broken for years. That's all I'm mm. saying. Mm. So. Good point. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so where do people find you? Or did you we go already? Luke, Luke on Twitter or Luke at wearabletoday.com. Uh, same place <laughs> I mentioned. Or plus Luke Wallace on Google Plus. Google Plus. I, oh, that's right. Yeah. I do have we've... I will be posting some pictures from my uh escapade, escapades this uh weekend uh, over there uh, shortly. So All check right, that cool, out. Cool. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, this is, I think this is episode number 56, but I'm not 100% sure. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that. So anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. We do an audio version and, of course, a video version, and uh, you can check it out there. Once again, the show notes, two weeks off unless something big happens at South by Southwest, and I'll probably do a recorded show as opposed to a live show recorded. Um, just, so just watch the, uh, watch the feeds for the next couple of weeks, but we'll definitely be back in three weeks. Hopefully, we'll, well, we'll definitely have some information from more from Mobile World Congress, more from South by Southwest, and, uh, and go from there. If you want to be a guest on the show, let us know. Go over to uh, Wearable Today. Go over, uh, go over to our, uh, our, our profiles and say, hey, I want to be on the show. Please let me on the show. I want to be on the show. I want to be on the show. I want to be on the show. And we'll say, oh, okay, okay. On the show. Come on. So, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. You guys geek out, and we'll see you next time on the next episode of Wearable Today. Take care.